flex route is an attempt to squeeze more capacity out of our existing infrastructure. Instead of widening every road, what we're trying to do is take advantage of the, the space in the middle, the extra shoulder that's there, and use that during those peak volume times. Many places in the country it's called active traffic management. And if you just think about it in that way, it's, it's actively using the capacity you have to assign a lane when it's really busy. And when it's not really busy, then you put traffic in those normal lanes. So a morning commuter that would come up on a normal congested area on US 23 will find a, a big arrow over the shoulder, which is their symbol to use that lane and continue south. Later in the day, you drive through that same section of roadway and there'll be a big X over the top of that lane, which means you can't drive on there then. When you have an incident that closes one of the lanes, you now have the capacity to maintain two lanes of traffic through that area. By using the, the gantries and the technology that's there, you can divert traffic onto that shoulder and onto the other lane to actually maintain traffic around all of that, uh, that incident, maybe fire trucks or EMS, what happens to be there, and you can continue to move traffic from uh, you know, an overall operations perspective. I, I think US 23 corridor is the perfect place to, to try this innovation. It's directional traffic where in the morning people going into an arbor, southbound is congested, and northbound there's a lot of capacity. And then in the evening, people coming out of an arbor, it's congested and southbound has capacity. So if you really look at it that way, you don't really need a permanent third lane there for 24-7 hour traffic that's really not there. It's mostly AM peak hour and PM peak hour traffic. So while we're starting with US 23, the next real logical application for this is Interstate 96 from Brighton in towards Novi. That already has a big wide shoulder from Kent Lake already into 275. The bridges are already combined. I think that's the next natural progression for where this goes. You know, another obvious place could be 131 north and south of Grand Rapids. I think that's got rush hour traffic morning, afternoon, probably very similar to US 23. That could potentially be a candidate uh, as, as we go forward and evaluate this. We have a lot of needs out there and not enough resources to, to take care of them. So we have to, to do things a little more smarter. For instance, the US 23 corridor, if we were to try and put a third lane out there, you're going to have to buy a lot of right of way, it costs a lot of money. So managing congestion, you find uh, an efficient way to, to use the uh, existing system or infrastructure and try and see how you can modify things to make it, to make it work uh, for you. Flex routes, and particularly this piece that is going forward on US 23, fits with our overall ITS strategy in connected and automated vehicles because it's providing the communications backbone through that project all up and down 23 that will enable the roadside units to uh, transmit and receive information from the cars that are going by it. So they'll share information back and forth. This area of US 23 doesn't have any of that technology now, and this project also will dovetail on all of that work that's happening in Ann Arbor with, uh, uh, with M-City, at Willow Run, with the smart corridors that are all in Southeast Michigan. At the end of the day, flex route is about providing the opportunity for the motorists to spend less time in traffic and more time home with their family.